how we define environment, right? Because how you would define your environment is going to have an impact on the decisions that you make and how you navigate certain spaces when you're in them, right? This concept of environment is very interesting. Now, I'm speaking about if it's from the perspective of the average person, right? So, for example, where I grew up, <clears throat> like we said, like I said before, we believed in the idea that we were the products of our environments. Many people, I mean, to this day, continue to believe that that mantra, right? It's unfortunate because it's not based on any real facts. I think it's it's based on individuality and, and how that individual feels from day to day or what they, they're going through. If they can't catch a break, then they believe that this is where they belong, right? They're rooted here and they can't change. They can't shift, right? And that... That really got me thinking about this episode because I, I beg to differ. And I often use myself as an example and so many um, people who made it out, specific neighborhoods and ones that were very similar to mine. Right? So let, let's break this down a little bit. Traditionally, environments have been defined from a physical aspect or setting, Right? in which people live. So when you think about that, the word environment means more than just the physical surroundings that we occupy. Right? I believe it includes the experiences of all those who came before me or us, right? And the imprint that they have left, not just on me, but on you. And you got to think about that. Because those imprints are what we call today traditions, customs, and, you know, <clears throat> some might call it imperative aptitude, which is also known as influence. Right? So those before us indirectly and directly have left an imprint of what they experienced, what they endured, right, in our DNAs. So that really got me thinking now. <clears throat> if my ancestors or those before me in this neighborhood left something that is embedded in me, then that's pretty scary. I mean, it's very powerful, right? So that's, that's something to consider, I think. Now... Let's go back to environments. Environments, I think, can be described as geographical, right? Uh, I think it's also spiritual, right? What, what you feel inside, how you feel. Um, and then, obviously, social, economical, right? Your status and how it impacts you and how you feel, which is spiritually, again. And then you reflect you know, you're reflective based on what's happening around you, your physical. So all those things I feel are, are connected. But um, a clear definition has to be made between what is around people and what people have, like as far as possessions and what they don't have. And finally, what is also within that group of people for them to believe this this to be their truth or their, their reality, right? Um, but I think it's clear and easy for everyone to understand, you know, that what takes place around me or you, right, has the potential of influencing my decisions. Just as much as what is stored inside of me, right, as far as my knowledge the ideas, my belief systems, prejudices that I might have, right? So all those things are going to have an impact on my decisions as well. So if my thoughts and my emotions and my feelings are impacted by my surroundings, my physical surroundings, then clearly 
my spirit is also impacted. And if my spirit is impacted, then that's going to influence my decisions. Right? The actions that I take or don't take. So <clears throat> we need to we need to be aware of this. Like that means my environment is not just the room that I'm in or the spaces that I travel in. My environment is also what's in here because if what's in here is toxic, I can only imagine, right, what decisions I'm going to make and, and how that's going to impact my future. <clears throat> 